Um, thank you for coming tonight, and thank you, yeah, thank you to uh, Ringing Rock for making it possible for us to actually be ourselves and not be somebody else. And so I, I come from Burkina Faso. It's one of the tiniest countries in Africa. It's not so big. It's a landlocked country, um, and it's French-speaking, so it's not well known in uh, America. Um, in this country, there are about 60 tribes speaking as many languages without the dialect, sometimes which sounds like Spanish and French. And, French. and um, in the southwestern part of this country live a tribe called the Dagra tribe. And uh, my, uh, that is my tribe where I'm from, and my uh, community is very varied. Um, in the sense that um, the people do not uh, consider uh, themselves isolated from the rest of the community. Well, that basically means that if you are a child in such a community, you are a community child. Um, so you learn to actually grow up with many mothers and many fathers. And uh, for a crazy child like myself, it was actually a heaven. In a sense that I can pick a mom for a day and ignore everybody else and it was just perfect and welcome because um, they saw it that, uh, as a way for me to get my needs met. Um, now, the flip side of that is that when you do something bad, you, know, you have to answer to all those people. That <laughs> um, and so uh, growing up in, uh, uh, in, in this situation basically meant that you have to be very flexible so that if uh, you're not uh, hearing what one person is, uh, is saying, you might have to go to 10 different people until you actually hear what uh, they're trying to uh, communicate to you. And so I basically grew up in this environment where the houses are built with mud and nicely polished with uh, cow dung and ash, uh, where uh, the children growing up have their uh, room, the women had their room, and the men had their room also. It's not to promote gender differences uh, or sexism, but it is actually a way for children to be able to meet their need and for women to be able to meet their need for men as well. And um, then they would come uh, together. So men and women often will come together, but if you see uh, spouses getting together, it's always in a sacred space. Uh, maybe I'll get to that, we'll see. Um, and so uh, in my tradition, it is customary that when a woman is pregnant, that they do a ritual called a hearing ritual, just like you hear, a hearing ritual. And the purpose of a hearing ritual is to basically listen to the incoming baby, to find out who they are, why they're coming at this time, and uh, what is their purpose, basically? What are some of the things they like, dislike? What are the things that the living can do in order to prepare the space for this person? And based on the information they get, the child name is then given. And uh, upon um, uh, getting the name, the elder have to hold it until after birth. Four weeks after the birth, the naming for a baby girl would take place, and three weeks after um, uh, birth, the baby boy would be named. And um, in the Dagger tradition, you own your name up until the age of five. After the age of five, your name owns you. Yes, <laughs> you find it funny. <laughs> Because your name is an energy, your name has a life force. It can create an umbrella under which you live. And so the kind of name you give to your child would, de would determine what kind of trouble they will get themselves into. Um, um, once the name is given to you, then the people make sure that whatever you're doing fit with your purpose. And uh, when you then become a teenager, and you know when we all become teenagers, we have a tendency to want to fight to gain our own authenticity, our own self, our own whatever it is that we're looking for. 
And that is often seen as welcomed opportunities for the elders because it is only, uh, only a sign that you are ready to go through initiation. You are now ready to take on more responsibilities. So when you go through initiation, you come back out and you have to go through mentoring. Because going through initiation is basically like this. Someone takes your life into thousands of pieces and then throw them all up in the air and then say, now, find the pieces. <laughs> but mind you that the pieces are not supposed to be exactly the way they were before. If they are, then there is something wrong. So the pieces have to be different. And that is the role of a mentor. So each time you want to pick a piece that fitted where it was before to guide you in a different direction. What if you put it, you put it here? What would happen? And you start to think, hmm, that would be interesting. Well, let's explore that interesting thing in this. And so you start to realize that major challenges that you have gone through in your life are initiation forms. And those initiation forms are there to basically help you take the next course in life. And if you do not take those courses in life, basically something in you dies. And yet the purpose of initiation is to get you to get those things to die so you can get the new skin on. Just like a lizard, you know, growing up, shedding those skin and taking on something. So you don't want to put the old skin back because it wouldn't fit. And if you do succeed in putting it back, it means that you are going to be forced to repeat whatever experience you went through over again. And we know that we don't want to do some of those things. So, so the scope, um, they are, um, in the life of a child in Africa, basically you are born via ritual and you basically die with ritual, and your life is basically committed to ritual. 